I want to swing back to something you said a little bit earlier because I know for a lot of the women listening, it may sound a little counterintuitive. And that's when you said, if you're looking for the one to not look for the ideal guy, and you also said, lower your standards. Well, so women out there, I know inside are having a response and reaction to that. What he's telling us to lower our standards? What he's telling us not to look for the guy? I thought that's the whole point. So I want to just go a little deeper with that because I feel like I understand yes. what you're saying. I mean, I really think I, I grasp the idea and the concept behind what you're saying, but I know there are people listening. I know for a fact, and I know I'll get emails of people yep, saying, yep. what does he Let mean me. by that? <laughs> What, what I mean by that, well, there's, here's some, first of all, if you don't have the one right now, it's because you're missing some relationship skills. And we've talked on our shows together about the relationship skills. We haven't focused on that. I'm just saying that the main point I'm making here is love the one you got, okay? And practice your relationship skills. Because if I, if I'm a woman, and I have relationship skills that aren't working. Generally, they're called people pleasing and overgiving, mm -hmm. and and also hyper bias towards negativity. Okay, being what do you want to say? Uh, your mind just starts going, "Oh, he didn't do that, or he's not doing that, or why didn't he do this?" Overreactive to things, uh, a bit too picky. Whatever. That, those are those tendencies. Yeah, That's or they're one. looking, or they're looking online, and none of the men measure up at for even a that, conversation. That's right. That's right. It's just like it's not enough. Not enough. Not enough. It, it's 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 you. Something's going off inside of you. And what I'm telling you is that if you begin to open your heart, you'll see better qualities than all of these not enoughs. And they still may not be the right one but you're going to use them to open your heart so that you attract the right one and you'll be able to recognize the right one. You'll know this is the right one. It could be a diamond in the rough even, mm -hmm. but you're going to know this is the one. And if you can't find a diamond, it's because you're not yet a diamond. You're a diamond in the rough. You have to get this, that the world is a reflection of us and there's abundance of opportunities for us to grow through relationship and enjoy relationship and to use men to get to that place. So if you find, let's say you find a man and you look at him and you go, oh my God, this is a diamond. All that's going to do is activate every automatic reaction inside of you that doesn't work in a relationship, which is people pleasing. You're going to lose yourself. You're going to overgive. And then you're going to be disappointed because you'll push him away because you're not being authentically yourself. Let me give you an example of that. A simple one. I... I'm not much of a people pleaser, but there was a time in my life when I was young and insecure and wanted to be part of a group where I could see myself as a people pleaser. And I'm sitting there at the table and somebody brings up, oh, did you see this movie? And I want to be included in the group, right? And they said, John, what'd you think of the movie? Did you like it? And this is a bit of a controversial movie. And I'm like terrified. What if I say I liked it? Did they all like it? What if I say I didn't like it? Did they all not like, you know, what would they think of me? That's called people pleasing. And we live, women often swim in a sea of people pleasing, which is how do you comb your hair? What are you putting on? You know, how are you presenting yourself? Do you ask too many questions? Do you not ask questions at all? Another aspect of people pleasing is being a good listener, agreeing with what he says. No, you need to share more points of view that are different from him. You need to practice being able to have a different point of view and not feeling threatened when somebody says, well, why would you say that? How do you, that's a, that's a relationship skill. This is what my books are filled with relationship skills, but let's look at this one. It's a very important one for dating. First of all, don't ask him a lot of questions, just enough to get the conversation going because men generally are quiet guys. They can't talk. Some are talk too much. Some don't talk at all. But if there's, you know, you ask a question, get it going. And now you're going to talk three times more. So what did you think about the election? Finding even something a bit controversial and let, and if as you agree on everything, change the subject, find things that are different. So you get to practice having a different point of view and not being attached to changing his point of view. Think about how many times in a relationship where you argued with a man, any argument is two people trying to change their point of view. So you want to practice, how can I hear another point of view from mine and share my point of view without trying to change them 
without conforming, without giving in, without getting upset about their point of view. You know, nobody knows all the answers in the world. You know, so you learn how to how to dodge a man trying to fix you, change you. And yet you're not turned off to him trying to do that because that's what men do. That's what you accept. And what you have to do as a woman is learn to not take it personally and not change how you think to get his approval. What makes people attracted to each other is differences. You don't just adjust yourself to please somebody. You adjust yourself to please yourself and come back to feeling good. And, and so this is like learning, having conversation styles where you're not trying to fix or change him. And he's going to try to fix and change you because that's what men do, because they, they're not taking this class. <laughs> and you just, you buffer it. You just say, well, I see your point of view. Well, that makes sense. And I have a different point of view. And be okay having a different point of view. This is really important training where you can start getting grounded and recognizing and being aware of how much you give up your point of view. Or there's other women who never give up their point of view, but they're always trying to change his point of view. You see, there's like, well, how would you say that? Well, I can't believe you would do that. Well, your men should never do that. All that you should never do that. You should be, that's your own inside, your demanding side, demanding someone to change in order for you to be pleased. And if the more a man is a diamond, meaning you want to get him, the more those automatic negative processes, compensation measures, alternative ways of reacting, inauthentic, not loving and supportive, not accepting, all that stuff that ruined your last relationship, you can start becoming aware of it and freely adjust it and let it go because he's not a diamond. Because it is a diamond, it just controls you because there's always a fear of losing him. Mm -hmm. So you want to get in a relationship where you, there's no fear of losing him. So then you can practice new ways of relating. And the first step is awareness. Notice how you try to change yourself in the presence of a man. Notice how you try to get him to love you and like you. Don't try. The right man, you don't have to try. I, Bonnie, my wife, my soulmate, she rejected me over and over. You know, I had to really work hard to get her to love me. And so she had a sense of entitlement that, that wasn't like, you know, demanding entitlement. It's just that, you know, she didn't try to persuade me at all. I got to pursue her. And because I pursued her, I won her. I conquered her. I, I, I achieved her. I made adjustments to make her happy. I bonded with her so deeply. That's how men bond. If you do things for men, he doesn't bond with you and it brings out the worst in him. Because when you when when I do something for you, it strengthens your female side. When you do something for me, you're strengthening my female side. Men are already too much on their female side. They need more masculinity. So give him the opportunity to give to you by not giving him, but instead when he does things that are helpful or supportive, appreciate him, but give him trust in that you don't need to change him. And also you don't need him to be the perfect person. You trust the universe is gonna bring you the right person once you become the right person. And that's how you find the one 